All right, so now we've done our tutorial on game, and it's time for us to do this real time with the actual SPSS software. Right now we're in the Canvas course, and let's say that we're gonna have to rely upon using VMware, and we don't have it opened yet. In that case, our first step, since we're gonna need to use SPSS within VMware, is to add a tab and type in the view.miracosta IDDO. There we go. Then we'll go ahead and log in with our Surf ID and password. Click sign in. Indicates OK to open the VMware Horizon client. Ideally, you have this already installed on your computer if possible, and that's a little bit more stable. But otherwise, the view.miracosta.edu will also work. So we'll go with the standard student desktop, double click. We're told that a warning use of the system is restricted and monitored. Okay. And we'll exit the full screen mode as well. Now we'll have the second opportunity to once more log in with our surf ID and password. And then click the arrow to the right. When we got it right, we'll go ahead and log us in. All right, we're in VMware. So we'll go ahead and open up the browser within VMware. Remember, VMware is our virtual computer. So when I click and open this, I'm not opening a browser on my computer. I'm opening it on a virtual machine. It took a while, but now I have the browser open up within VMware. So here's the VMware. I can kind of move it around. And now that I have the VMware open, I'm going to go ahead and close um, the canvas on my own computer. So I'm closing this. There we go. I'm just going to minimize this here. And now this is the, the VMware uh, interface to that virtual computer there. So now I log into Canvas. And again, sort of ID and password. Click Sign In. I get to do the two-factor authentication. Signing in. You'll want to select our Canvas course. Here we are, I'm in student view. I'm gonna go ahead and scroll down and head to our module. And then within here, scroll down to our SPSS activity. And now we're, we're back at the activity itself, right? So uh, resume the quiz. And here we are. So we have started up VMware. We have Canvas running within the uh, VMware browser. We've navigated back to this quiz. So now, because we're within VMware that has both the Canvas and importantly SPSS, we can download the Student Survey 2012 data and open up SPSS. It shows us this file as having been downloaded. So I'll go ahead and click on it to open it up. Give it a double click. There's SPSS starting up. I'm using the pause button a lot, so this is going a lot slower than the way it appears on this video. I have this little message here about the uh, Unicode and coding mode, and I'm just gonna say yes. And yay, we have our SPSS file open. And I'll scroll down. So here it goes, scrolling down. Here's the bottom of our data set. We're going to add on 91, 92, and 93. So I'm going to go back to Canvas. And let's see here. What does that data look like? So for respondent 91, student sex is going to be a 1. Political party will be a 5. Importance of faith in own life is a 2. And this data is going to be different for every student who takes this quiz. Okay, move Canvas down a little bit. Clicking on the SPSS file over here. And let's see, here's the variable sex. So for 91, 92, and 93, let's do it that way. Uh, for student sex, I'd be a one, a one, and a two. Okay, so one, a one, and a two. So we've added uh, student sex for our three respondents, 91 and 93. Now we'll do likewise for political party. So coming back here, we'll scroll to find it. 
There we go. There's political party. So we record a five, a four, and a four. Political party a five, a five, and a four. Okay, good. Nope, there's a five, four, four. <laughs> okay, try it again. Five, four, four. There you go. Got to get it right. And then we need to look for the variable importance of faith in our own life, and it's going to be a two, a three, and a five. Okay, so I found the variable faith importance, and it's going to be a two, a three, and a five again. So here we go. A two, a three, and a five. So we've entered the responses for three, three respondents here. It's just for those three variables, and now we're good to do the analysis. So having finished up here with question number two, which just gave us the data and that's it, we can move on to question three. We don't have to respond to question two. It says if you, it's worth zero points, but so I say, if you want to get it right, you can just put in a six and you'll get it right. So if that's a perfectionist uh, out there, you know how to get the, the zero points. So now um, it says open the APA style report. So if I click there, it says, hey, you're about to can navigate away from the page. Is that okay? Yeah. Pop up blocked. And we go ahead. Always allow it. Sure. Done. Try one more time now. Okay. Hey, this time it worked. Awesome. So this is the, the report that we're going to create. Only this was with 90 students and we're going to do 93, right? So it the way to do this, one way to do this, we can just highlight the whole thing and control A will do that for you. Um, or you could just, another way to do it is you can just hold down the mouse and scroll bar. You could do this, but honestly, just doing control A, it's all highlighted. And then right click on that highlighted area uh, and choose copy, or you could do the edit and choose copy either way. So now I've got it copied. Now go to a new Google Doc, or you could copy and paste this into a, a Microsoft Word document, but you want to get into a new new document either way. So here we go. Start a tab. I'll click the um, dot, 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 <laughs> by three by three grid of dots. Go to uh, Drive. And here's where I'm going to go ahead and go to my, my Google Drive where I can create this. So I'll sign in, enter my password. Google is using a two-step verification to make sure it's me. And I just resize a little bit. I'm gonna click new. And I'm gonna go have a new Google Doc. This is where I'll put my APA style report. There we go. And now I can uh, right click and choose paste, or I can use the edit and choose paste, but put that in and there, there it is. That's the, the Google report, uh, APA style write-up. But again, it's for 90 participants and now there's 93. So I have to do the analysis and then I can update this. So let's do that. Head on over to my SPSS data. So here we are, we have 93 people. So to do the analysis, as you remember, it's the analyze drop down choose descriptive statistics and from that frequencies then you select your variables so importance of faith in own life is one of them uh, we should also have students sex there we go and finally political party should be here as well there we go so those are our three variables that we're working with and then for statistics for central tendency we're going to go with the mode that tells us what's typical when working with nominal data, just categories. We'll also select the median. That tells us what's typical for ordinal data. That's categories you can rank, and the median would be the middle value of a rank distribution. In terms of variability for nominal data, just like, well, how many categories were there? For ordinal data, um, we'll want to know, like, well, what was the minimum? What was the maximum? That gives us kind of the extremes, if you will. Could include outliers. And then we also want to know, well, what about for the middle 50%, you know? And for that, we work with, well, what was the 25th percentile and the 75th percentile? So we're good now. We've got our measures of central tendency. That is what's typical. And we have our measures of variability, you know, how much range was there? 
So I'll click continue here. We want our charts. That's our bar graph, right? So here we go, bar chart, uh, percentage. You could go either way. Percentage is nice, uh, kind, of, kind of big picturesque. Click continue. And we already have the frequency table, but I'll say create APA style tables. That makes it a little bit more streamlined. And we're done. So click OK. And yay, we, it's, it's, it's here. It's good. All right, so let's take a look at the... Um, the students at sex, right? So this is from 2012. Um, at that point, it was pretty common to request, uh, ask like, what student sex? You know, today we'd be asking like, well, what's your gender? Uh, so we're working with this data set here. So I'm going to right click and choose copy. That's the table there. And I'll go into my Google Doc over here. And I can go ahead and give it a title, right? APA style right up nominal and ordinal. There we go, that's our title there. And so for student sex, this is the old data. This is out of 90, right? 69 plus 20 plus one, that's 90. So I'm gonna delete that, I've highlighted, pressing delete key, and now I will replace it. I will paste. So now it's the updated version and this is 93, so good. Then we'll update uh, the writing here. Uh, it's gonna be now um, the majority of 93, Behavioral statistics students interviewed in fall 2012 reported their sex as female. We're going to change that from 69 to 71. Followed by male, and that's going to change from 20 to 21. So that accounts for the three additional participants we added. We're done. Let's move on now to political party. So we'll go back to the uh, SPS output. Here's political party. I'll go ahead and click on it, and I could use the edit drop down to choose copy it. Go over to my Google Doc. Here's the old political party added up to 90. I'm going to highlight it and just press the delete key. And then I can go to the edit drop down menu and choose paste. So now this is for 93, right? So again, we'll have to update this. So most of the 93 behavioral statistics students interviewed in fall 2012 when asked about the political party selected none. That's still 30 from the five options available. Other responses were Democrat, still 21, Republican, 20. Yep. Uh, independent is West 10. Let's see. It's now 11. And other is going to be nine. So there we go. So we've taken into account all our additional three we've added. So now we have all 93 there. It's going pretty quickly. So now importance of faith and own life. We're going to update that chart. Here's that chart. So I can click on it and I can do control C or on a Mac, it's command C. Come on back here to my Google doc. I'll click on the old chart, press the delete button. And then I can do control V or command V. And there we go. And it's nice to include this graph because the way that we do the write-up, it doesn't make it as clear the large number of people who chose are not religious. And then also kind of thinking about all these people who, to some degree or not, um, religion is important to them, their, their faith. So um, it, it just kind of conveys a slightly different picture than, than the write-up. So here's a case where it really pays to have both of those pieces of information there. Okay, so now let's update uh, our write-up. So for that, we need to get this table back to SPS output and let's see frequencies statistics right here it is so it's already highlighted I'll do a control C come back to the Google Doc I'm going to highlight the old statistics table press the delete key and do control V or again if this was a Mac it'd be command C command V C to copy and for whatever reason V to paste Okay, so here, here's our, our stats. Now we'll do the write-up. So of the 93 behavioral statistics students interviewed in fall 2012, the typical view on faith importance and on life was, all right, so let's see. Median, that was three. Faith is somewhat important. Cool. But you know, I should still show you how you look that up. So here's our SPS output. Here is 
the SPSS you know data. We'll go to variable view, and we're gonna go hunting for the importance. Let's see, faith importance. Here we go. Here's label. Here's values. We'll click on faith importance uh, cell in the faith importance row in the values column. Click on the dot dot dot. And here's those five possible values. So one is not religious, two is faith is slightly important, three is faith is somewhat important, four is faith is fairly important, and five is faith is very important, right? So it's just a nice way to look at it. You could write it down, you know, pencil and paper. Uh, just make sure you have it. it. Makes it easier for writing up the report. Okay, so head back to our Google Doc. And it's possible that our three people will be added isn't going to change this at all, right? Because um, it'd have to change the median or the min max or the uh, 25th or 75th percentile. So let's see. The typical view of faith importance own life was faith is somewhat important, right? The median, ooh, looks like it, it may have actually changed by adding those three people. So it's now a two instead of a three. So now it's going to, uh, two is faith is slightly important. Okay, so. Uh, the, the typical view of faith importance in life was faith is slightly important. So, hey, the difference of a few people can totally affect this right up. With responses ranging from not religious, right, our minimum. Uh, oh, oh, I was misreading it. Never mind. Remember how before importance faith life was here on the right? It's here on the left. <laughs> Always pay attention to your chart. So no, median is still a three. So I'll do control Z. Control Z is really nice. It um, helps you to undo what you had. Control Y will redo it. So there we go. So for importance of faith in our own life, median is a three. So it's still going to stay at faith is somewhat important with responses ranging from not important. Right. So let's see. Our minimum was a one. That was not important. Two faith is very important. That was a five. Um, and the middle 50% of responses ranging between not religious, so 25th, yep, still one, not religious, uh, to faith is fairly important, and that was, ooh, ooh, so now we have um, a 4.5, so 4.5, we can round up to a 5, I mean, that's what we typically do. Previously, we had a 4.25, and we rounded that down to 4. So let's make that change there. Uh, faith is very important. And again, when we have this uh, write-up, it's it's helpful to both have the APA style write-up and be able to see the chart, right? Um, together, they help to create an overall more balanced perspective of, of what's going on here. For the nominal variables, we could probably get by in real life um, without the table because it's, it's all here in the write-up. It's not really necessary. For a political party, here it might still be advantageous. Generally, if you had the table, you wouldn't include this, this follow-up sentence. We're doing it because we're kind of learning. Uh, but you, know, you try not to duplicate your information. Um, either you have as a table or you have as a write-up. In, in our case, you're specifically asked for assignment to have both the table and the write-up, table and write-up, but just like beyond this class. And then in this case though, because our, our write-up style is a little bit different than, than the table, it's, uh, the, the bar graph that is, here it's actually useful to have both. All right, so there we go, and we are done. Uh, last step, if you're using uh, the Google Docs, would be to do the file, download, as PDF, and then you would upload it uh, as your response to the Canvas question number three. And that's it.